G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. It definitely has been a while. Recently I have completed the creative red teaming course by Mandiant and while I did have a fun week off doing this instructor led training, it was a little bit disappointing to say the least. So in this video I want to break down what the creative red teaming training is, look at the syllabus, look at what's involved in the training, some pros and cons and ultimately what I think about it. So let's get straight into it. So many of you know that Mandian is considered one of the industry leaders within the field of cybersecurity, and you would think this would extend to their training. However, after doing this course, and despite the instructors doing their best, I really think that this could be money spent better off. So without giving my opinion too much straight away, let's look into what the course is. So creative red teaming is meant to be a way to take red teaming further. It's meant to show you creative tools and techniques in a way to enhance your red teaming capability. So in the syllabus, we have things like creating a, and setting up a C2 server, doing recon, doing your initial compromise, getting a foothold, privilege escalation, uh, ensuring persistence, conducting lateral movement, uh, an internal recon, and finally completing the mission. So this is delivered in a course that is five days long, uh, instructor led so they are actually going through the slides and materials with you they're taking questions that uh, you have time to do the lab and then you do a lab review after so it is very hands-on and it's very guided so in this course you're given a 350 odd page pdf uh, you obviously have the instructor instructor led training as well uh, and they they do some of the exercises uh, live in front of you rather than just showing you slides, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you have a lab. So the lab is much like the CRTO where it is a contained lab environment where you access it through Apache Guacamole and you have both a, Winix, a, Winix, a Windows and Linux virtual machine to conduct the attack. In the lab there's about 15 odd machines that you can compromise plus the CTF. Pretty standard delivery of a lot of courses nowadays where you access it through Apache Guacamole and do it in your browser so you don't have to worry about your own local virtual machine. Which is great for making sure everybody is start starting from the same base. However, the connection to this lab was absolutely awful. And many of you know, I live down here in Australia, so we're at the bottom half of the world and connecting to servers in North America were just awful. I often had frequent dropouts, about once every 30 seconds. However, one of the trainers did suggest that I use a VPN and connect to a North American VPN server, which I have private internet access for, not sponsored. And that actually really solved the issue. Obviously, this is not great, especially for a very expensive course. They really should provide you everything you need rather than you having to uh, go about your own way to be able to access their training. And this issue, I really didn't have that much in CRTO. Only a couple of dropouts now and then, and sometimes a little bit of lag, but largely quite okay. So for my personal experience of the course, what I did find was the course materials really seemed, seemed outdated. The materials were about five years old, we're using old versions of Linux and Windows, and a lot of the techniques just largely isn't something that's really used anymore. And while I did find that the course was marketed towards the, uh, you know, creative red teaming, uh, we're going to look at creative elements of this, I really didn't find anything too creative with it. And I also found that syllabus was way too broad. So this syllabus was really a mix of the OSCP and the CRTO. It covered everything from how to do an Nmap scan to how to do a SQL injection to all the way of, okay, here's some low level exploit that you can use with PE file loaders and everything like that. It really just was way too broad. It covered way too much context. And to squish all that in within five days with a audience that is vastly different in skill, then this really isn't going to deliver that solid training experience. If you've done something like your OSCP or similar, then you are already probably about confident with about 80%, 90% of this course material. So onto the cost and value. And while I've kind of described the value, the cost isn't so clear to understand. This isn't made public on their website and some basic recon made me see that it was about worth 5,000 US dollars. I was able to do this training through work and we didn't pay through cash, uh, but Largely speaking, I think that it will cost around the 5,000 US dollar mark, so about, you know, seven to 8,000 Aussie. And for that price, I could do OSCP, I could do CRTO one and two, and probably grab a Sector 7 course or two, 
and gain way more, way much more knowledge in these small courses at my own pace, rather than trying to cram everything in in an instructor-led five-day course. So the finances here really don't stack up. So on to the pros and cons. The lab instructors were really helpful. They were doing the best they could with the limited resources they had. I'm not gonna blame the instructors for delivering outdated training, especially when they're just doing their job. This really comes down to the head of training for Mandiant to make sure that the courses are up to date and relevant um, and competing against the industry competitors. I also found that the labs were basic, but they were fun and they were great for me to get my hands back on again, having been hands off for such a long time. Now onto the cons. Obviously, if you're not in North America, then the lab connectivity is just awful. The latency is bad, you have frequent dropouts, it's just not an enjoyable experience. And having to use a VPN to just get a bearable experience is really not up to standard. I've never had this from any training provider, even using something like Apache Gu Guacamole. The course materials are seriously outdated. Come on guys, if you are you know, doing industry leading research, you are some of the best red teamers out there, you are finding zero days, you have your own research team, why the hell is your training five years behind? The training is way too broad. You can't have people who have never seen a Linux terminal in the same room as seasoned experienced red teamers because nobody's gonna be happy. Your experienced people are gonna get bored your junior people are gonna get overwhelmed. Section down your courses, make sure that you are attracting the right people and have a narrower focus. Don't teach a senior red teamer how to do an SQL injection. And despite the name of creative red teaming, this was really just sticking to the red teaming basics. Working through your whole attack life cycle, there's nothing really creative about this. I didn't see any cool new ways of doing vishing or fishing or new bypasses or zero days or anything that this course led me to believe would be in there. So for my bottom line, do I recommend this course? I think by now you could probably see it's a firm no. This course is extremely expensive for what it is. It doesn't deliver on its promise and it is extremely outdated with a lab environment that barely works unless you're in North America. For the cost of this course, you could get so much more and the only downside would be it wouldn't be instructor led. You'd have to do it on your own. But with the amounts of online communities and discords and everything going on now, I really don't think instructor led is that important unless you're really doing something highly technical, in which case you'd want a lower scope anyway. So that's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in in 2024. I am back on the tools a little bit in my new job, so I am hoping to post a few more course reviews and training platform reviews just like this. I've got CRTO 2 in the works now. Um, I've been working with ZeroPoint uh, to do a review and a journal series on that, so stay tuned and also be showing some cool things. I'm working on uh, Proxmox and Arduinos in the background, so expect some cool content there. Thanks for tuning in again, and I'll catch you in the next one.